All right, family and friends, welcome back. Uh, sorry for that interruption. Is that I think by this time, like it's late, it's uh, almost 5 a.m. here. The Wi Fi, my first one, but if it happen again, then I switch to my hotspot. So I'm talking about the eliminated the eliminate, and I asked that question is it necessary for one or for you to return to your land and the people? Is it still necessary today? And uh, I encourage us to join me as we, sh you know, deliberate on it, air your view because we need to know we need to know about this you know it seems like uh, you know it is no longer necessary today for you to say oh, this is my father's inheritance or i'm returning to my people you see people you know living in abroad and they don't care going back to their father's land anymore so why is this still necessary so but i want to speak from how El 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 was elimin eliminated which also you can relate to, to it it happens today around us. And I was reading from Ruth chapter one, book of Ruth chapter one, from verse one, it said, and it said, it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, there was famine in the land. So I was talking about, you know, the judges or the presidents, you know, people that uh, they say that God put them in power and they are there, yet they are doing all sorts of evil so where is that god where is that god that put them in power where is that god when they are cleaning innocent souls where is that god when they are starving people when people are dying all wickedness going on in the world where is that god the god that put them in power don't care about people's lives and that's when i started reading the book of job chapter 9 from verse 23 say when a good person dies a sudden death god sits back and laughs that's what god does just one, that's what God does today. I, I, I made a post where I asked people, what can save you? You know, God, gun or bulletproof. It's common sense, bulletproof. Gun cannot save you. You can use gun to shoot or maybe kill somebody else. Or thank you, protecting yourself. No, gun cannot save you. Another gun will kill you. Gun is not for protection. Gun is for attack. You cannot say I'm using gun to protect myself, no. You can use God to protect yourself. And the God cannot protect you. The, like the book is there, Bible, or whatever you call it, or you put chaplet, or whatever you put, you say, God will protect you. God can never protect you. God cannot save you. The bulletproof can save you. It's common sense. Yet people are saying, God, nobody can save you but God. How have you seen God save anyone? Fulani has men keep killing Christians in Nigeria, yet a Christian in Nigeria will still say God is protecting them. You see evil before people go inside church in America or in other places, blow everybody up or shoot and kill people in mosques, in churches. In, and you still see somebody saying that God is the only one that can save life. How, tell me one life God has saved in your own family. Let me start with your own family. Because many times we, we keep looking, you know, far distance uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, for solution to our problem or answer to our question. Your life, your family is is is, is the is, is the beginning place, the first place you should find the answer to your question. Has God saved anyone in your family? No. Somebody in your family was sick, he went to hospital, they treated him, he came back, he says God that saved him. It's not God that healed him. God that cannot God cannot heal any sickness or any disease. If God can do anything, he won't let wicked people be your president. He won't let wicked people be your judges. He won't let wicked people be ruling over you. And I was also saying something on the other video before the interruption. It were elders that are supposed to be ruling over the people, just as a man rule over his family. Why should a king, a king or a judge or a president ruling over the entire people? That's why they can sell in the, the, the whole people. Is it not how our people lost the Bakasi land? Is that when one person how why we want why we one person control the whole people the whole community one person no it is the elders and they came from all family all families represented so nobody will rule we will, will make any rule or any law that will suppress your own family and you say okay i agree no you say no it's not like this thing we will make it to the way it will benefit everybody that's how it's supposed to be 
But they bring all these corrupt leaders, say this person is king, this person is judge, this person is president. That's why they are doing all the evil. And the God you believe that put them in power. Where is that God in the, in the, in the time of, of wickedness, in the time of injustice, all that? But when the elders were the one ruling, you see, you see equity, you see fairness, you see, you see justice. Because they will make sure that is, and they don't need to build any prison. Because when one person begins to do, all they are doing is to build something to make money. They build prison yard where they keep people and be making money over people's life. You think that's saving the... No. We don't need any prison place to be locking people up. Because something makes people to do what they do. So why are you locking them up? They can, let them go somewhere else and leave and change their life. That's what our ancestors were doing. When elders were running things. Not now that one person can bribe everybody and become king or become president or become judge and begin to, you know, do whatever he wants. So when a good person dies a sudden death, God sits back and laughs. Verse 24. And who else but God blindfolds the judges? But who else but God blindfolds the judges? It's in your Bible. Job chapter 9 verse 24. He said, but who else blindfolds the judges but God? He said, then let the wicked take over the earth. God blindfold the judges and let the wicked take over the earth. Who is running this earth? It's not Satan. It is not God. It is people. But you have been taught it is God. God, God cannot do anything. Then let go, let's go back to Ruth, chapter 1, where I was. He said, before Israel was ruled, oh no. He said, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. Where was God before the famine and where was God during the famine? You don't think like that. You don't think about that. All you think is to tell you what God has done. But you don't need to hear what God has done. You don't need to hear it because God's supposed to be preventing problems, supposed to be preventing sickness, supposed to be preventing disease. But God is not preventing all that. But you will tell me, God will heal you. Where was God before you become sick? He said it was your mistake, but he's supposed to be watching over you. He's saying he's everywhere. He was there. When, when, you, do, when you do that thing you say you did, God was watching you doing that. It's like you're watching your child put her hand in fire. You are cooking in the kitchen and your little baby, maybe two years old, come, mommy, 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 or daddy, or daddy, and going into your pot of soup on fire. You will allow the baby to put her hand in that pot of soup, hot pot of soup, boiling? You know you won't do that. But you are God is watching, all powerful, all seeing, all knowing, everything. You say he can do all things, yet he will be there when you fall. That God does not exist. The reason why you believe is your fault is because you are religious. When you quit religion, you will find out you are not at fault. You are not faulty. You are 100% you are pure. 100% good. Your heart is clean. Everything about you is good. There's no nothing bad about you. You are not useless. Your heart is not wicked. Your heart is not desperate. No, it's religion that make you all that. Religion make you greedy. Religion make you desperate. Religion make you confused. Religion make you think, think thinking you have a, a, a heaven where you will go when you die. The judges were ruling under God and there was famine in the land. Everywhere, people that said God put people in power. Life never been easy for, for the masses. The masses keep suffering everywhere. But in America, in Africa, everywhere in the world where you see people, they say they sit like king over other people. The masses are suffering. Whether it's Asia, whether it's Europe, whether it's America, whether it's Africa, everywhere, that's why you see suffering all over the world. But they'll be showing you only the good ones they want you to see. Why is it everywhere people rule under God? They, there is always problem. They are, the, poor, the masses are suffering. 
Now in the land of Israel there was famine then, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, Amorani, Amorani, Anyanza Pota, Na Bethlehem, Nke Judah. The place they tell you they born Jesus. <laughs> There was a certain man who went, uh, I mean, from, um, a man of Beth, Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab. There was no famine in the country of Moab, but there was famine in the place they tell you it is God, God's choosing place, God's choosing land. Everywhere they tell you God is choosing, there must be suffering there, especially the poor masses will be suffering. There is no God that chooses any people. There is no God that chooses any place. It is wicked men, wicked people that, that, that are greedy, they want to convert, they want to take what belongs to other people. I'm using the name of God to do that. He went to the land of Moab, and he and his, his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Noami. And the names of his two sons were Marlon and the Chilion, Ephratites of of Bethlehem, Judah, and went and they went to the country of Moab and remained there. He remained there. He did not. He was not on visit. There was famine in their land, so he has to be eliminated. Famine eliminated Elimelech. It was not Satan. It was not devil. And you know who always sent famine in the land of Israel? Who? God. Who used to send pestilence there? Who used to send salt there? Everywhere it is God that is killing people. God is that is starving people. You know how many people that died during that famine? And that's how this man was eliminated from his land. In the land they said there is God there. A land they said that is flowing with milk and honey. He was eliminated as a man. He's supposed to remain in his land, but there is famine in the land. What else do you expect him to do? He has to migrate. He has to leave. He has to go and remain in another land. Verse 3, Then Elimelech, Noami's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. Elimelech left his father's land to land of Moab because of famine and he died there. Where was God when famine came? Where was God when Elimelech left? Where was God when Elimelech remained in Moab? And where was God when Elimelech died? You don't care about that. All you know is you want to follow the story because they want to show you something else. They want to show you what supports their useless beliefs and, and faith. He died in Moab and never returned to his land and the people again. Is it not the same way many Africans are dying outside their father's land? Many of them are dying in prison in China. Many of them are dying in prison in America. Many of them are dying in prison in Europe. Many of them are dying in prison everywhere in the world. They will never return again. There are some people you know today, but they are in prison. You don't know they are in prison in China, in Malaysia, in, in America, in Europe. Some of them will not return. Some of them will return. And these people believe in God. These people said, there is God. When you talk to them, they say, you are talking nonsense. I, don't, I can't stand you talking, uh, there is no God. You are a demon. You are antichrist. Yeah, let me be. Let me be antichrist and demon. But where is your God when you are locked up? Where is your God when you run away from your village, from your town, when you are, when you are eliminated? If you are not living in your father's land, I mean in your village where you are supposed to live, you have been eliminated. But you can change it before you die, so you don't die like a limenek in the city. You don't die like a limenek. That's why you see some people when they die, they say they are taking their body. You left alive and you are returning dead. That is not life. 
Elimelech was eliminated from his land and God was watching, smiling, because he laughs, right? And that's why he sits on his throne. And this is why you are afraid of that God. That's why you fear that God, because you think that God will let evil before you. That God is evil itself. It, it, is, it is evil that creates evil. It is evil that let evil happen. God is evil. He said that, I'm not the one that said that. He said he created evil. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7. And he said he created destroyers to destroy. So God is evil. God is a destroyer. God is the devil. God is Satan. But you are too afraid to say it. Because the thought of it torments you. The fear of God torments you. You can't say the truth and set yourself free. God cannot touch me. God cannot do anything for me or to me. He cannot. God is useless to me. God is useless to my generation. God has no root in my life and my generation anymore. I uprooted that God out. Oh. What are the things that is eliminating Africans today from Africa? You can answer this question, sim you know, very simple. Since after slavery, I'm not talking about the one slavery uh, eliminated. But our, our ancestors that were jumping overboard, you know, some of them walk into the ocean, some of them use as, 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 a, as, as food for crocodile and the alligators, some of them were, were sawed in two, some of them were born alive. You know, all the, they eliminated many of our ancestors during slavery. Then after slavery, you can you, you you can answer this question, but let me come up with some. Maybe you come up with some also. Colonization has been eliminating Africans from Africa. Foreign influence. You see, Africans in Africa, they are living like dead bodies in Africa, walking dead in Africa. And you say you have African leaders. No, you don't. They are serving the colonial masters. Colonization has been eliminating, eliminating Africans from Africa. And you think you have independence. Independent what? You don't have independence. It's just a paper. It's just charade. charade. They just put it there. Okay, we have independence. We're celebrating our independence day. Which independence? When you are not independent yourself. You are not free to live as a person in your own land. Now government is controlling your own land. Not in, they, you cannot do anything. Colonization has been eliminating Africans from Africa. And because of the, the pressure in Africa, you see many Africans running away from Africa. Like Elimelech. And some of them will return, some of them will not return. And some of them will just be visiting, they will never return again. No, there are many Africans that have made up their mind, they will die in abroad. They are not returning. But that, if you die in abroad and that happen to be in, among those in charge of taking your body back home, I will, I will make sure I get a lot of money from that money. I'm giving money for dead body, that is nonsense. If you want to die, go back home and die. If you want your body, if you don't, let them bury you wherever you die. Or you don't believe in Allah, 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 again. You believe the whole uh, is the same thing, one word, one word. Okay, so it doesn't matter where you die, right? Wherever you die, let them bury you. You say you believe in Jesus, you believe in God, Christianity. Your ancestors were bad. Why are you still saying, okay, when you die, make sure you go and bury me in my father's land. You don't need it anymore. You are going to heaven. You say you... You don't need your ancestral place or for anything. Since you are switched to Jesus, since Jesus is your Lord, God of Israel is your God, then what are you doing with African land? You call it your father's land. The second thing that is eliminating Africans from Africa is corruption. And that corruption has two arms. The first arm is religion. Religion is making life unbearable for Africans in Africa and is eliminating them. Religion is what eliminated Africans from their root, made them hate their ancestors, made them hate their way of living, and saying it is evil, it is, 
it is uh, not uh, worthy of your yeah, time or anything. Just let it be. That, you know, it, it cannot help you. I, I read the comment our people make when it comes to our ancestors. They say, uh, the ways of our forefathers can't help you either. You are stupid saying that. White people cannot say that about their fathers. Asians cannot say that about their forefathers. It is only Africans, black people that say that. And this religion that made us, everyone that said that must be a Christian. Even Muslims don't say, African Muslims don't say that. It is African Christians having zeal without knowledge. They think they will go to heaven. They think they will go to heaven and their ancestors will be in hellfire. You are stupid. You are one blood with your ancestors. You don't need me to prove it. Your blood is there. You without your ancestors, you wouldn't be here today. What makes you think anything can separate you from your ancestors? But you believe faith in Jesus separated you from your ancestors. Now you said, nothing shall separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. It has death, life to come. No, you are stupid. You don't have life without your ancestors. Without your ancestors, you don't have root. A tree without root, tell me the future of that tree. You will get, you will get with us and you get burnt. You are the one that will go to hellfire. The hellfire you believe exists. Corruption through religion has been eliminating many people from Africa. And you see many men of God in Africa. You see people believing in God. Yet life is unbearable to people in Africa. Where is the God you are praying to in your church? Where is God you are praying to in your mosque? Where is God you are praying to in that religion? When will that God intervene and save you and make life better for all of, all of you? Religion. You say you have a God. Then why are you, why are you, uh, why are you asking somebody to send money to you from America, from Europe, from Asia? Why are you selling your land and sending somebody to go to America, Europe, or Asia to make money? Why can't that God do it? You may say I'm selfish. That is nonsense. Ask my siblings. Ask my father. I'm not. I know. But I can, if, you, if anyone said they believe in God, then let God take care of you. If I don't give you, don't call me anything. If I don't give you, that means... Uh, God will give to you, right? So let God give to you. God cannot give you. It is we that will be giving to each other, not any God. And before I came to America, I've been giving to my family. I don't need to travel abroad to give to my family. I know how to make money. I don't need to travel abroad to make money. When I was in Nigeria, I made money. Mm -hmm. Of course, I started trying to make money from little like that. Corruption through religion has been eliminating many people from Africa. And these people say they have God. They worship God. They did that. And there's another question Africans often ask. You know, how about your ancestors, their God, their, their, what did their God do? Stupid. What happened to your ancestors has nothing to do with any God. But what caused them? Their, 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 their power and their heritage was religion. Religion. When they left their ways, because they were believing, they believed that nonsense. There is one God control. There is no one God controlling everything. They believe in spirituality. What we are spirits. We are not spiritual beings. I, I, I wish you understand it different. There are different between spirits and spiritual being. Spiritual being is what you mean. It's religion. When you say you are spiritual, you are saying you are religious. Because you have to do something to be spiritual. Spirits don't have to do anything. Spirit is spirit. Just like life. There's nothing you can do to, 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 have, to make life any. Life is life. You just live it. And as a spirit, you live as a spirit. Stop spiritualizing everything. It's a spiritual thing. It's not. It's a natural thing. We are naturally spirit. We are not spiritual beings. I wish you got it. Religion is what caused our answer because they had that religion and blindly showing that hospitality. When you are religious, you will show hospitality. That's why you see many people in church, in mosque, you see them being robbed every week. They are still going there. 
showing good oh you have to take care of the pastor you have to take care of the prophet you know pray for your pastor do this for your pastor nonsense it is your pastor that's supposed to be taking care of you if they are of god it's your priest that's supposed to be taking care of you if they are of god that's why in your bible god commanded the believers to collect the tithe and share it among the poor it is the poor that eat the tithe it is not god not god who eat tithe in the bible for what But that is how the nation of Israel in that story were taking care of themselves. It was not a real thing that happened. Religion is one of the th things that the corruption, the one arm of the corruption that is destroying Africans and making Africans to be eliminated from Africa. The second arm of that corruption is politics what you call democracy today, what African embrace without asking questions, they just want to be like Americans. They just want to be like British. They, don't want, they just want to be like everybody except themselves. They use that police, politics to divide and conquer Africans, control, controlling Africans. Africans are working on their head. While others are working on their feet and flying, Africans are still working on their head. As a people, politics is why we have a lot of division. Remember, I say religion and politics, so I'm talking about politics. You see how they are crying. That, uh, uh, some people say, uh, say share that clip. The people from uh, Delta and uh, and the Edo State, they are crying now that the uh, Nigerian government want to take their land for grazing. You know, because they will possess it. When they take the land, they build their house, they are, it becomes their, their land. There's nothing you can do. You are crying now, right? But you, you call it politics, right? When people were talking about Biafra, you said the agitation, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, we are one Nigeria, we are one Nigeria, just shut up. If this is why you guys will not be president. This is not, you are stupid. Be president where? In bondage? I'd rather be, uh, I'd rather die than be president in slavery. A presidential slave. <laughs> How would I say presidential slave? Huh? Politics bring corruption. You are crying. Nah, they, wanna, they will take it and there's nothing you can do. They give money to your people that are representing you in the, in the, in the Senate or in the House of Rep. They say, okay, we can handle it. They tell you, don't worry. You know, it's temporary. It's temporary. It's temporary. Boom. Because Africans don't even care about their posterity. All they care about is their prosperity. They want to go all over the world, buy the best things in the world. They are not producing nothing. They don't care about their future. All they care is now, how many jobs do you have? How, how many houses do you have? What have you done? What are you doing? What are, well, have, come home and do this. Come home and build this. A land flowing with milk and the honey, but there is famine in India. Elimelech was eliminated. He never returned again. I say, I laugh at those who are building mansions back home and are living in America. I say, oh, you think your people, your brothers that are living in that place, they will like you to return to, to claim it? They will kill you. And it has been happening. You send your money, your brother build a house for you. When they say, I'm, I'm not building any house. I build family house. I'm not building any house. It's not my house. I have only one room. And they tell me how many times I'm sleeping in that one room. <laughs> People don't think, man. Most problem we are having, we created it. And we are the one that can eliminate that problem. If we don't eliminate that problem, it will eliminate you. Politics, they use it to divide and conquer us. You see people that are speaking Igbo language. Their culture is Igbo culture. Everything Igbo, they tell you, I'm not Igbo man. I'm not Igbo person. 
the Nigerian government don't care about what you're saying. They are, they are achieving their... They know you are Igbo. Whether you are part of Edo State, uh, Delta State, River State, Calabar, all those areas. They know all of you are Igbos, Biafrans. You can claim all you want, speak all the grammar you want. When they want to kill Igbo people, you are included. They will kill you. Because they know the truth, but you are, you are denying the truth. Because they divided you and gave you politics. You think it may be having a nice car and bearing name, chief and sit up. That's another thing that is killing our people. I want to make a name. My name is Ochoa Zawa now. Obunkuwan. Not everybody will chief and sit title. What have you achieved? If you don't have chief and sit title, you are nothing. Oh, I want to be chief and And you see those criminals you call kings. You know, charging people money to give them chief and sitter. It's no longer the time they give people chief and sitter to based on the good work they have done to the community. Bring 30,000, okay, chief and sitter. What is, what is the title you want? Oche is a one. is a go to one. He'll give it to you. Is that how people live? No. Is that where you want people to return from abroad to? No. A place, if you have, at, let's say you have $1 million or maybe $50,000 or even $10,000, you are scared of walking around for not being kidnapped or for not being killed. You are scared of eating whatever you have, your, your uncle or people around you give to you because you don't want them to poison you. And yet you say, I believe in God. I serve God. The God I serve. <laughs> Nonsense. Politics destroy Africa. Democracy demonize Africa till today. And Africans have been eliminating from Africa. I'm looking for greener pasture. What happened to your own green? It's time you begin to wake up Africans. Mm. Many Africans who left for America, for Europe, for Asia, will never return again. Many of them will never return again. Some of them said they must return. They return the kingdom. <laughs> Take their life. When I go to my village, I see big houses. They say guys in Malaysia build it. Nobody's in the in the house. Just build it for me. I will tell them I made money. I'm coming home to show them I made money. Is that life? How long are we going to live like that? Americans are not living like that. How many Americans are saying, oh, I want to build it, I want to... Some millionaires in America are living in condos. They, rent, they rented it. They did not build anything. But you just make $5,000 in America. Oh, you build upstairs. I want to build upstairs. Yeah, build upstairs. You work two jobs, three jobs. Sometimes you don't have enough sleep. You see my eyes. <laughs> Somebody that is telling me he believes in God and Jesus Christ is telling me to, when I'm coming to Nigeria, I should bring money. Why am I bringing money? You are God and you are Jesus supposed to provide for you. You don't need my money. I'm not bringing any money I'm bringing is for me to enjoy. <laughs> and I give to whoever I want to give. But you're not telling me God is using me for, I don't want that your God to use me. I use my money. And if God wants to give you money, let him make that money and give to you. Not the one I make. I make money and give to you. He says it's God. Then I'm not giving you. Many Africans in abroad will never return again, not because of any devil, because they don't have papers to return. They know if they return without those documents, they will never come back to America or to Europe or to Asia again. So they rather stay in India. It's better to stay in America where you don't have paper, but you stay in America. At least you can still work and be making some money. Then you return to Africa and you don't come back to America. You know how they will be treating you? How they'll be mocking you in every bar. Your name will be spreading everywhere. They, you will walk. They say, good morning, sir. You walk. They laugh. They mock. They laugh at you. <laughs> they say, see, you travel abroad and come back with nothing, nonsense. 
Many of you, I mean, some of you don't know that, but it's yet, and some of you know that, but you ignore it. Some of them, as I said, will not return because they are in prison. Some will die in prison, or when they come out from the prison, they'll be useless, so they will not come back. They died here. Or when they want to return, maybe after they are old, they return. You will not know they return. They died and they buried them. And some of them also will not return because they are running out this drug ring, you know, doing drug. Drug are useless their life. You think they are still there, they are coming. They don't know even their town anymore. They are in abroad. Many things are happening that is eliminating Africans from Africa. But many of us don't care about returning. That's why some few of us that are awake, well, that are waking, are calling you to wake up. You say you don't care, and that's why I'm asking you: Is there any need for us to return to our land and people? Is it necessary, necessary for you or for me to return in a place we call our land? Tell me. Let me tell you what they put in the Bible. And the people that put this in the Bible are using it, but you Africans are not using it. Proverbs chapter 22. This is what your oppressors put in the Bible, and that's what is guiding them. They don't play with their whatever their ancestors established. They are not playing. That's why since their ancestors handed Africa over to them, they will never let Africa go. They will continue. It's only Africans that you see in America. You see African Americans. You think white people will let African Americans go? No way. You are kidding me. Their ancestors gave them, uh, gave those black people to them as slaves, and that's how they wanted to remain. They be giving you little things. They say, yeah, integration. You know that good. You know it's not that far. Wicked people. Mm -hmm. Proverbs twenty-two, mm. verse twenty-eight. Oh, I'm still in the <laughs> I'm still in the root. Proverb 22. Come on. Man, I need to sleep. I need to sleep. Well, let me see. Proverb, you see what sleep does. If you don't sleep, you'll be affecting you kinda. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. It says, Do not remove the ancient landmark which your fathers have said white people asians the japanese people chinese people they refuse to remove their own ancient landmark they keep it it did not stop them from going to the moon it did not stop them from being among war powers but africans say their own landmark is what is making them not to prosper <laughs> so they need god and jesus to make them prosper when they're praying and they're binding the spirit of their ancestors, hey, the spirit of my ancestors, oh, they're confessing the sins of their ancestors. White people are not confessing that nonsense. Asians are not confessing that nonsense. They see their ancestors as great men and women. Africans see their ancestors as Satan and demons. And you're telling me you will prosper. You remove the old landmark. Oh, earlier yesterday I was thinking, when I was little, my father used to take me to masquerade and something. It's called Oko, in Amanasa Omochu, which is done once in a year. I remember when my father used to take me to that uh, tradition before he became uh, um, uh, like serious with Christianity. He was a Christian then, but he was also doing masquerade, which we call traditional stuff. I remember in those days when visitors came to our house, my father, because I'm the firstborn, he would want me to sit to listen to the conversation. He would want me to follow his steps. But my father is not following the steps of his ancestors because he's a Christian. Christianity cut us off from following the steps of our ancestors. So we removed the ancient landmark. And since we removed the ancient landmark, we lost everything. The Asians did not lose everything because they did not remove the ancient landmark. Africans did and see their condition today in the whole world. Let me show you another place. Hosea, before I go to the story of Nebot, because many of you that know Bible, when you hear about like uh, inheritance, you remember Nebot and Ahab. But let me read Hosea chapter 5. 
Hosea chapter 5, where is Hosea? Hosea chapter 5, verse 10. He said, the princes, the princes of Judah are like those who remove a landmark. Princes, people that are supposed to be running. People that are supposed to be royalty, they have removed the landmark, then they become like slaves. The picture of Africans. Then let, let's see the story of um, Ahab and the Nebot. First Kings, First Kings chapter 21. First Kings 21, wow. I'm wasting a lot of time here, but hey, what it, man? Let me do my thing. Let me read one to four. And it came to pass after these things that Nebot the Jezreite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to palace of King Ahab of Samaria. So King, so, so Ahab spoke to Nebot saying, give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is near next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. I will give you a vineyard better than it. My people, no other land will be better than your own land. No other land is better than your own land. Say, so I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth and money. See? Money. Another exchange, right? Verse 20, I mean verse 3. But Nebuchadnezzar said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. What he inherited from his fathers, he said, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. Whether it's for you to give me a better one or for you to give me money, I don't care. I want to retain that inheritance. I want to develop it. I don't want to sell it. I don't want another one for it. Remember, the king gave him two options that many of us will jump in and say, okay, no problem. I will give you a better one than that. Or I will give you money. Mention, the, mention, mention it. How many zeros do you want? You take it, God's give is close to my house. But the man know the importance of what of inheritance of his fathers. Verse 4. So Ahab went into his house solemn and displeased because of the word which Nebot, the Jezreel, the, the Jezreel, Jezreel, Jezreel had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. Nebot was, the, was not the one that troubled because he, he held unto that inheritance. The one that was troubled was the one that came for that inheritance and he refused to let him have it. Who is suffering in Africa to do about Africa? Africans. Because they let their inheritance go. The inheritance of their fathers, they let it go. Who is enjoying Africans, our Africa today? Those Ahab, the white people, Ahab, Foreigners, they are the ones that are enjoying Africa today. Can you relate? Ahab, neighbors say, no, I'm not, I'm not selling and I'm not exchanging. No, no, not for sale and not for exchange. Psh, no. You have better one, have fun. But what is mine is mine. The king went sorrowful. And Nebuchadnezzar slept good until Queen and I, Jezebel, you know, you have a lot of Jezebel today. Those women who are talking their husband into doing some useless things just for money or just for, way, just for, you know, they come and destroy families. They come and make a man, turn a man into a monster, even to his own people. Ahab Nebot refused to let his father's inheritance go for whatever reason. 
But Africans, you have let your father's inheritance go. But there is hope you can restore it. I've been saying the solution to it. You have to restore your power first. When you restore your power, then you will recover your heritage. If you don't have that power, you cannot have weapon to be the weapon of those who are holding your, your heritage. They have weapons. They have nuclear weapons. You don't. Even if you start building nuclear weapons today, they will still be ahead of you. Because the more you're making this one, they're making new one. Fight? Okay, let's fight now. They kill you, you kill them. But they still have your heritage. For you to get your heritage back, or restore your power. And you will see how easy you will get. They will beg you to come and take your heritage back. They will beg you that they will not come and interfere in your way of living. They will say, okay, please. They will take back their Christianity. They will take back their Islam. They will take back their, their, their Judaism. And you will have your way again, living as a great people. I want to ask you again, does it matter where somebody dies? And I, I remember when our people used to do, no, I will not die in a, in a strange land. I must die in my father's land. And when they don't feel where they return home, they think they will die, they come back home. Then when they survive, they go back to wherever they want. How many people still do it today? How can you tell somebody living in America to relocate to Africa, even when he's old, when you know that if he falls, nobody will pick him up, no ambulance, nothing, no medical assistance. Will you blame such person? We have to recover our heritage and develop what we inherited from our ancestors or we keep suffering in this world. You say you don't care. I don't care also. I I'm in America already, right? I can decide not to return to Africa. It's not a problem, but what I have for my people will never let me do that. Is it okay to be eliminated permanently? Do you want to be eliminated like Elimelech in the Bible? He was eliminated because there was famine. He carried his family. He, he cared for his family. He loved his family. He said, let us go to the land of Moab so we can survive. But he did not make it back. He died in the land of Moab. Don't be like a limonek. I keep asking ourselves that question. How long are we going to continue living like these Africans, running away from our land? They keep talking about, you see how coming to America is becoming difficult now because Trump is president, right? Because Trump don't want people from Africa, especially from Africa, to come in. But you see, see Africans supporting him just because he's a Christian, not, so, not anything else to prove that their God is the one that chose him. Nonsense. The God that cannot help you in your family problem. And it's affecting Christians too. Christians that want to come to America. Even those in America, you fight for paper. I fight for my father. I don't know. I never hear from them since. You just go like that. Don't be like a Limanek. Don't. Let us rebuild our place. But it will start with our life. How you still have that European mind, you have American mind, you have Asian mind, you don't have African mind. It takes African mind for you. When you're talking about African power, you know what Africans think? You want to be native doctor. You want to be idol worshiper. Fool, fools. Native doctor and the medical doctor, what is different? Nothing. They are the same thing. But because you don't know the, what, it, what is called African power and because they make you believe African power is, is evil. That's why you're talking what you don't know. Have you tested that power before? No. All you know about that power, they use it to kill my papa. They use it to kill my mama. They use it to kill my uncle. My uncle used it to kill my father. That's all you know. Is it not the same thing they do with guns in abroad, in America, in Asia, in Europe? They use gun to kill one another. Also, they use gun to protect one another. The same goes to your African power. You can use it to save lives. You can use it to kill lives. 
but you abandon your father's inheritance just because of nonsense Christianity taught you. You are exalting Donald Trump, but you don't know how your people are suffering under him. You don't know. I'm not suffering though because I've decided to live my life. I'm not voting anymore. No, no matter who, even if you are God saying you want to become president of America, I'm not voting. I don't care. It's, their policy is not affecting me. Their policy will only affect me if I'm greedy. If I'm chasing for American dream, that's when I'm not chasing any American dream. I'm not voting anything. My vote is not my power. My voice is my power. I don't need to vote. If you vote, you vote them in, they live better life than you. So why are you wasting your time? Let them be living better. I work, they pay me. If I don't work in America, I will not, they will not give me anything. Even if I get fired and I go for unemployment, it's what uh, they have been taking from my money they'll be giving me back. Don't be like a limonic. Don't end like a limonic. Develop what you are, what you inherited from your ancestors. You have to do that, Africans. I've been telling you this. All we need as a people to succeed in this world is already in our land. We don't need any other thing from any America, United Nations, Europe, or Asia. No. You see how China is taking over many places in Africa. And your leaders are the ones doing that. And your God is watching. Then uh, the day they take over everything, you begin to say, okay, oh God, come on, which God? Where was God before they came? If your God has been taking care of you, China will not be in Africa. Where is God in Africa? Show me one place God is now. Show me one place God is in Africa. No place. But you lie, fear, and, uh, and ignorance will not let you to admit it. You are ignorant of what you, who you are, and you have fear of God you have not seen. That is what is keeping you below you. It's time you wake up. Do not be like the eliminated eliminek. Begin to seek and, and, and recover your heritage, Africans. You say you don't want to do it? Okay. That's what I'm not desperate for anything, nothing. You want to compete? Feel free. You want to covet? Feel free. You want to fear? Feel free. You want to compare? Feel free. You want to worry? Feel free. But after all said and done, you will die. Leave everything. What is that thing you are bragging about? You think you're better than me? Okay. You're better than me in one area. I'm better than you in another area. So you are not better than me. I'm not better than you. We are just here to live our life. We're supposed to live it well. Why are we living as slaves under people, especially people that our ancestors were greater than? We have to restore that power. I'm still looking for a native doctor. A native, hear me loud. I'm still looking for a native doctor, good native doctor. I don't mean native doctor that is looking for money. I don't mean native doctor that is a Christian or that was a Christian. No, I mean a true African native doctor. When you see true African native doctor, they don't tolerate nonsense. They don't let injustice go. They don't let um, uh, unfairness stand. They don't let uh, in, in, in inequality stand. They make sure there is justice. They make sure there is equity. They make sure there is fairness. And then the rule, the, like the ordinalas and the menalas, they make sure everything is done well. We have to develop it. You think, oh, our native daughters think, or maybe they, they must do this. They can develop it. They can make it good. I don't blame some of you also because our native daughter, when you see them, they put white thing over their eyes, we are tattered something. No. That is no that those things are nothing. That that's 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 nothing. We are talking about African power. You can wear suit and still you um, do that. You can dress well and still do that. Or no clothes and still do that. But what are we doing for ourselves, for our people? That's the main thing. I, will you be like a limonic? Will you be eliminated permanently? Or are you going to wake up? I refuse to be eliminated like a limonic. I am holding 
to my father's inheritance as Igbo man, as African. I'm African, born African, real African, and that's where I stand. I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not a Jew, I'm not American, I'm not European, I'm not Asian. I am African. And I encourage you to wake up and know who you are. Then we can recover our we can recover our heritage just as as soon as we recover, I mean we restore our power. Thank you. Peace.